one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. How do you do? Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents every Tuesday and Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. I take two tweets and give a couple of thoughts about those tweets to take you beyond 140 characters. I promise to never go above 15. If I can get it below 10, that's even better. And if I can get it down to only like six, seven minutes, wow, what a day. So let's waste no time. Let's dive right in. Tweet number one. All right, all right, all right. People who can't laugh at themselves will always be outwitted by people who can. I can state this one succinctly. When you lose your sense of humor, you lose, period. You lose, period. You ever seen The Wizard of Oz? There's this scene in that movie where Dorothy like pours some water on the Wicked Witch of the West. And when she does, the Wicked Witch of the West literally begins to melt away. She dissipates, right? She has a freaking meltdown. Well, that is what it is like when you are able to laugh at yourself, when someone else is trying to troll you or trigger you, you cause them to melt away. You cause all of their power to diffuse. When people can realize that they have no buttons on you that they can push, that they can't ruffle your feathers, they can't make you lose your composure, they can't make you lose your, your cool, they don't know what to do with you. They don't have a box to put you in anymore. Your ability to just laugh at yourself is one of the most powerful things about you. Speaking of, it's funny, because I had somebody uh, contradict me. They, they wrote in the comments to this tweet. They said, well, I don't think the Mongols, I don't think the Mongols were known for their sense of humor. And it was funny because I was like, let me, let me play around with this. And I Googled like the Mongols and humor and immediately found a couple of articles, a couple of books referencing how they had a great ability to laugh at themselves. They love practical jokes. They love to joke around, you know? Uh, and then that person came back and says, well, okay, I stand corrected, but uh, what about this group over here? And I just sent them a key appeal Giphy because ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time to really prove this point. But I want to share this point with you because a lot of people talk about the value of thinking for yourself, but they don't understand the connection between those two things. If you can't laugh at yourself, it's going to be so much harder for you to be able to think of, think for yourself. Because if you take yourself too seriously, then that gives other people the power to manipulate you based on your need to always be serious, to always be taken seriously by others. In fact, the essence of trolling is to push your buttons in a certain way so that you begin to try to prove yourself and justify yourself and, and present yourself in a way that gets other people to take you as seriously as you take yourself. And once people see that you need that from them, then they can just toy with you. They can just pull your strings. They can just sit back and have fun with you. Like, nah, I'm not gonna take you seriously in spite of that argument you gave me. Nah, I'm not gonna take you seriously in spite of that research you presented for your point of view. And how do you get your power? You let go of the need for everybody to take you seriously all the time. But TK, I got a couple of objections. Yes, these are real. These came from people. One person said to me, hey, look, man, I mean, but sometimes life is serious. And that is true. And you know what's great? Taking yourself seriously doesn't mean that you can't ever be serious, right? You can spend the majority of your life being serious and sober, but it's all about having the ability to go into a space where you say, okay, I'm not afraid to laugh at myself. I'm not afraid to let this person get away with that joke. I'm not afraid of not being looked at as some God or some guru or whatever it may be. Second thing, I had somebody say to me, hey man, is there anything that's not off limits? Is there anything that's not sacred? Here's what I want to say about that. You don't have to be willing to laugh at anything. You just have to refuse to let anything keep you from laughing at all, right? Like you don't have to laugh at what you're going through in order to laugh at yourself while you are going through it. Those are two different things. Another thing that people get confused is that it's one thing to laugh. It's another thing to try to be a comedian and make other people laugh. You don't have to make other people laugh at the things you are laughing at in order to experience the freedom of being able to laugh at yourself. This is for you. Let the comedians be the ones to make the jokes about all the serious stuff that's really hard to make people laugh about. But you don't have to get a whole room full of people to laugh at the same things as you in order to know the joy and the power that comes from saying, I know how to laugh at myself. Let's go to tweet number two. 
All right. The best way to manipulate people isn't by giving them some bad information, but by controlling their very definition of what it means to be informed. Once people have a bad concept of what it means to be informed, they'll spend the rest of their lives feeding bad information to themselves. You know, it reminds me of this movie called Equilibrium. It's a science fiction movie where, you know, the, the head of the state managed to convince everybody that their emotions were bad, that, that feelings were the cause of all the problems in society. And so they, they ordered everyone to take these injections that would stifle their feelings, okay? And everybody had to take these injections every day when they woke up in the morning. And so people didn't have curiosity anymore. They didn't have a sense of wonder anymore. They didn't have a sense of awe. They didn't have any concept of things that they were interested in merely because they were intriguing. So this was a world where people didn't study art. People didn't play music. People didn't enjoy dancing. People didn't enjoy comedy because they didn't have feelings, right? And in this world, everybody was so serious all the time and everybody only studied the things that the state wanted them to study. Why? Because this injection stifled the sense of wonder that shaped their concept of what it means to be informed. And it replaced it with an artificial concept of what it means to be knowledgeable and smart and responsible. And so you didn't have to manipulate those people any further. Once they bought into the idea that what they were interested in was bad, they were easy to manipulate, completely easy to control. I see the same thing happening today. So many people can't take their eyes off the news. They can't help themselves but click on every headline. They're obsessed exposing themselves to like dozens of traumatic videos per day about all sorts of things that's causing them to be depressed. And when someone says, hey man, why are you feeding yourself all that stuff? Well, I wanna be informed. Well, it's time to get a new definition of what it means to be informed. Because I'm going to tell you now, anything that's worth turning on is also worth turning off. The news is not an exception. We all have callings on our lives. We all have a purpose for being here. We all have a why. And your why has got to be bigger than the moment. And if your why is bigger than the moment, that means you've got to focus on being informed about things that are bigger than what's hot right now bigger than what's trending right now. Some of you are meant to be musicians. You need to be informed about that. Some of y'all are meant to be ministers and pastors. You need to be informed about that. Some of y'all are meant to work in technology. You need to be informed about that. Yes, it is okay to check out a news story or to be aware of what's going on, but there is so much more to be informed. How do I define what it means to be informed? Here's what I was saying, the three Ps, preferences, principles and priorities. And you got to define all of those things. What are your preferences? What are the things you care about? The things that you're interested in when nobody else is telling you what to read? What would be the videos you would watch, the podcast you would listen to when no one's saying, hey, 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 man, this is the stuff you need to know about. What are your preferences? What are your priorities? What are the results you want to create with your life? If 10 years flies by and you look back and you regret who you've become, what do those regrets look like? What do you need to do to avoid those regrets? Your principles. What is your value system? What is your why? What is the thing that makes it worth getting out of bed in the morning? Those are the three things you want to let guide your concept of being informed. A lot of people, they're going to wake up one day and they're going to experience so much regret because they're going to say, I spent all my time studying, reading, watching, listening to things that other people told me was important, and I never allowed my own preferences, principles, and priorities to shape my ideas of what's important. Don't be one of those people. Your best impact on the world is not going to come from you being a second-rate journalist about things you think you need to report on just because that's what everybody else is talking about. You want to have an impact on the world? What is it that makes you come alive? Go be more informed about that than anybody else because that's the kind of inform that's going to cause you to absolutely crush it in your life, crush it in your career, and have a powerful influence. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so thankful for all the people out there that's striving and endeavoring to stay informed about something other than COVID-19 and race. I appreciate all the people that are informed about those things, but we need so much more than that in order to create a diverse, holistic, beautiful, and brilliant world. So it's up to you. I'm not telling you you can't watch the news, 
far be it from me to tell you the person to be tell you what it is that you should study, but don't exclude yourself from who gets to determine what it means to be knowledgeable. You decide what's important and let that take the lead. That's it. Peace.